Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving angular momentum. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says to calculate the angular momentum of a three kilogram point mass rotating with a tangential velocity of four meters per second at a distance of two meters from the axis of rotation. So writing down what we know from the question, we're asked to calculate angular momentum L. We have a three kilogram point mass, the tangential velocity is four meters per second, and the distance from the axis of rotation is two meters. So because as we're dealing with a point mass here, we can write down our expression for the angular momentum of a point mass, which is L equals MVR. Substituting in your numbers now, we get 3 times 4 times 2, which quite simply is going to give you a final answer of 24 kilogram meters squared per second. Question 2 says that a spinning wheel has a moment of inertia of 0.135 kilogram meters squared. It rotates at 12.5 radians per second. Part A says to calculate the angular momentum of the wheel. Now notice that we're dealing with a wheel in this question rather than a point mass, so we're now thinking about the angular momentum of a rigid body rather than a point mass. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the angular momentum. We know that the moment of inertia of the wheel is 0.135 kilogram meters squared. We know the angular velocity is 12.5 radians per second. And writing down our equation for the angular momentum of a rigid body, we have L equals I omega. And substituting in our numbers now, we have 0.135 times 12.5, which gives a final answer of 1.69 kilogram meters squared per second. Part B says to calculate the mass of the wheel if it has a radius of 0.30 meters. Well, to tackle this question, we need an expression with mass in it, and you'll notice the one we used in part A has moment of inertia i in it, and you might also remember that the expression for moment of inertia has mass in it. So we're going to use that and basically expand this equation here. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the mass m, the angular momentum we've just worked out is 1.69 kilogram meter squared per second. The angular velocity is 12.5 radians per second, and the radius of the wheel is 0.30 meters. So writing down our equation L equals I omega, now in the expanded form, we can write L equals MR squared omega. And that's because the moment of inertia I equals MR squared for the wheel. So substituting in our numbers now, we have 1.69 equals mass times 0.30 squared times 12.5. And now we want M on its own, so doing the 0.3 squared times 12.5 in your calculator, and then dividing 1.69 by your answer to that, will give you a mass of 1.5 kilograms which sounds reasonable for the mass of a wheel. Lastly, question three says that a disc of mass two kilograms and radius 0.3 meters spins eight times each second. Calculate its angular momentum. Well, we first need to find the moment of inertia of the disc. So writing down what we know from the question, the moment of inertia is what we're trying to find. The mass is two kilograms and the radius of the disc is 0.3 meters. So writing down our equation for the moment of inertia of a disc, we have I disc equals a half MR squared, which again you would get on the relationship sheet in the exam. Substituting in the numbers, we get a half times two times 0.3 squared. Putting that into your calculator, you should then get an answer of 0.09 kilogram meter squared. Now that we've got the moment of inertia of the disc, we can find Find the angular momentum. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the angular momentum L. We know the moment of inertia of the disc I is 0.09 kilogram meter squared. I've just neglected the disc part of it to make it a bit simpler, but you could keep it there if you wanted to. And then to find our angular velocity omega, we need to take the number of times that the disc spins, which is eight, and times it by two pi, because remember two pi radians is the angular displacement for one full rotation. So if it's spinning eight times each second, then we're gonna have eight times two pi radians per second. So eight times two pi is the same as 16 pi, and putting that into your calculator should give you 50.27 radians per second. Writing down our equation now for the angular momentum of a rigid body, the disc, we have L equals I omega, and substituting in the numbers, we get 0.09 times 50.27, which gives a final answer of 4.5 kilogram meter squared per second. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.